Hey, it's Chris. Subscribers or technicians will know that I've had my eye on this 49 inch LG ultra wide 5K or dual QHD USB C HDR10 tilt swivel adjustable display for a long time. Now, I've seen a bunch of videos on this from Sarah and from the tech chap and from Linus and they were all great, really useful as I was considering buying this, but there's still some things that I would have wanted to know uh, and you can't get enough perspective sometimes on something that you really are interested in and want. Uh, so I'm making this video to talk more about the experience that I've had with it and less about all the technical details, just like how cool it is and the effect that it's had on my work and after work life. So here's what I'm gonna talk about in this video. Number one is my misconceptions or preconceptions uh, versus reality from before and after I got the ultra wide. I'm gonna talk about the actual productivity boost that I get when I'm using this with my MacBook Pro. I'm gonna talk about the gaming factor for when the work hours are over, so after work fun. And I'm gonna talk about some random observations that you don't wanna miss. If you are serious about looking into this and buying it, you don't wanna skip that section, as well as I'll probably mention uh, LG software that goes along with this. So in this first section, I thought it'd be fun to just talk about like what I thought before I got the ultra wide about the ultra wide and then how it actually was after going ultra wide. So before ultra wide, I assumed or I thought that there should be a boost in productivity. After going ultra wide, I realized that I massively underestimated just how much of a boost in productivity there was actually gonna be. Before going ultra wide, I thought maybe this is gonna be too big or maybe I would be better off with two 27 inch monitors side by side with maybe some even crispier resolution or maybe the HDR isn't gonna be very good or maybe the resolution is gonna be a little subpar for me. But after going ultra wide with this particular screen, I can say that no, this is the perfect monitor as I thought it was gonna be for me right now. Before going ultra wide, I thought to myself, you know what this would be perfect for, it would be seeing my entire Final Cut Pro timeline just in one fell swoop, from left to right, huge screen, see it all. After getting ultra wide, I realized, no, that's really not the best. That's not how I'm gonna use this because if you're just using a single program, you end up with a lot of extra wasted space and padding between the elements of a program like Final Cut. Before going ultra wide, I thought to myself, Maybe this could be really cool for gaming, even though it's not really a gaming monitor per se. And after going ultra wide, I can say it is very fun for gaming, <laughs> as you might suspect, even though it's not a gaming monitor, uh, even though it's not perfect, uh, but lots of fun to be had. I'm definitely gonna talk more about that too. Okay, so let's get into the main part of this video, the meatiest part of this video, the most interesting part for me, and that is productivity and how I'm using this with my MacBook Pro to get my work done. Now I'm using this on a 2016 MacBook Pro. I still haven't upgraded, still in the process, still kind of seeing what's coming out next month uh, in terms of MacBook Pro and maybe Mac Pro. So still thinking about it. Whatever I get, it's gonna be used with this monitor, but it's a maxed out 2016 MacBook Pro and it works really well. So for me, obviously, as somebody who produces a lot of video content, although you know working on podcasts and other content, what I like to do, I mentioned that Final Cut Pro really has a lot of wasted space if you use it full screen. What I like to do is put it kind of like taking up 50% of the screen, but instead of off to a side, kind of centered. So the center 50% of the screen. It's like having a 27 inch monitor with Final Cut right in front of my face. And then off to the sides, I'll have some periphery supporting related apps that make a lot of sense for my workflow. So for instance, I'll have a Finder app off to the left and remove.bg also off to the left, stacked on top of each other. So if I need to drag in some photos or video clips uh, into Final Cut, I no longer have to switch windows and stuff like I did on my laptop without a screen. Um, it's just right there, drag it right in. It's super quick and efficient. And then remove.bg right under that. So if I need to drag a file down from Finder into remove.bg, get that background out of there for the look that you guys like in these videos with that clean white background um, that's super easy. And then when that's done, just drag that finished product right into Final Cut. 
And then over on the right, on the other side of Final Cut, I've got Photoshop running. So I've got Final Cut taking up a big portion of the screen, the most screen real estate taken up by Final Cut. Photoshop over to the right with plenty of room to edit stuff. And then some file work uh, over on the other side. This is kind of my creativity video setup right now. And it should go without saying, I love it. Now, as we dive in to the podcast era of daily tech, then this could easily morph from a video editing flow into a podcast audio editing flow. And so, yeah, it's very adaptable, which is one of the things I love too. So obviously I do a lot more with my Mac than just work on videos in Final Cut Pro. And so for the first time in really forever, I have been getting some use out of extra desktops, those virtual spaces in Mission Control. And so I've got my creativity desk set up, the desktop, the space that I already showed you. And then when I swipe over with two fingers on my Magic Mouse, which I love, super convenient, I'm over into my organization and communication and web browsing space. So off to the very left, I've got Apple Mail stacked on top of Trello, which is one of my main productivity tools, kind of helps me track the flow of ideas and production for these videos and other content that I'm making and the team. And then on the middle left, I've got Apple Notes, and that's where I do a lot of uh, ideation, outlines for these videos, uh, keeping track of business and personal stuff there. And then on the middle right, I've got a full uh, web browser there, the Brave browser, which is kind of my go-to web browser on the Mac these days because number one, it lets me take care of the privacy side of things. Uh, it doesn't leak nearly as much stuff as Chrome, but on the other hand, it still lets me take advantage of all those Chrome plugins, which is great for somebody who lives and works so much in that Google ecosystem with YouTube stuff. Then over to the very right, I have another browser and sometimes two stacked on top of each other. Complete different browsers, not browser windows, different browsers. Uh, Chrome, so that I can be signed into two different Google and YouTube accounts at the same time. And sometimes Safari. It depends. It depends how productive and what I'm working on. So, so far, that's how I've got this set up on my Mac. And it really is such a breeze. Two finger swipe on the magic mouse into creativity mode and then into organization or communication mode or research mode. And it really is very productive, very powerful, very fast. It is not a gimmick. So to summarize, the productivity boost for me really comes from being able to see everything that I might wanna see or use or access all at once at any given time. And I don't have to zoom in or out of timelines or photos. And I don't have to constantly rearrange windows or flip through them or command tab to get between stuff. It's all already open all the time and it's just a matter of where I'm looking on the screen rather than sorting through an order of stacked windows. It really does feel like I've got a command center, so to speak, because the thing with this particular monitor is it's like having two 27 inch monitors side by side, but you don't have to have a bezel down the middle. All right, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about using this monitor and some quirks and things that you should be aware of at the end, but I do wanna switch modes and talk a little bit about gaming on this monitor using a gaming laptop, which I recently acquired and will be covering soon. So kind of for a change of pace, keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, but I got a very powerful gaming laptop, cost about $2,000, uh, hooking into this via HDMI. And on the back of the monitor, there's a little toggle, a switch. And it's like a four directional thing and you can easily reach around and you know, use it and switch between different inputs or check out the settings, uh, switch the color mode. So literally, let's say it's five o'clock and I'm done producing a video and I gotta get a little gaming in, just kind of loosen up a little bit. And all I have to do is reach around and toggle over to the HDMI from the USB-C and boom, I am in gaming laptop mode. So for a couple of games that I've tried on here, gaming in ultra wide has turned out to be really fun, like you could have suspected, uh, although not perfect. So like Assassin's Creed, it looks really great to see all that beautiful scenery and world uh, on this much monitor. On the other hand, the resolution and the output doesn't end up being super amazing. It definitely looks better on the display of the gaming laptop itself, the graphics. Fortnite, on the other hand, even at epic settings, looks pretty awesome, like really good. And that's probably just due to the kind of graphics uh, that Fortnite has. Uh, but wow, 
the Fortnite world on this monitor looks insanely good, I would say. Now, one of my favorite games in the world, I have to mention it here, is Star Wars Battlefront 2. It's a couple years old. I've been playing it on the Xbox since forever, and it's been a while because I let my Xbox monthly membership expire. I just didn't have much time to game. Uh, and this makes it a little bit easier to just be able to switch from work mode to gaming real quick and fit in like 15 minutes or 20 minutes, right? Um, kind of nice for taking a break. But Star Wars um, would not play on the ultra wide screen. Um, gave it all kinds of issues. So what I was actually able to do, and this is something that's cool with LG software, is have half the monitor, 27 inches, dedicated to my Mac and half dedicated to the gaming laptop and run both simultaneously and have both controllable with one keyboard and one mouse. And so for a little bit of Star Wars action, um, that's worked out really well. All right, so this is actually a good time to talk about LG software that helps you get the most out of all this screen space and real estate. So there's two different things that you could download to potentially take advantage of this 49 inch ultra wide monitor. The first one is called LG On Screen. And what it does basically is number one, help you adjust the color profile, which you can also do with that toggle on the back. Um, but more importantly, it will help you slice up the screen and divide it up so that you can easily and quickly get your windows placed and some basically automatically if you want with one click. So if you want it to have side by side windows or like divide it into thirds or fourths, or even have six windows, or one long one on the top, one long one on the bottom, uh, you can easily do that with one click. Now, it's kind of quirky. Uh, once you wrap your head around it and you play around with it a little, uh, you can learn like, turn it on, uh, and snap it into four columns, you know, and get that set up, then turn it back off um, if you wanna like customize a little bit. You know, it, it takes some time to get to know and get used to. But I've actually found that I wish that it had more options. There's a lot of options already. But I almost wish that it had more sub options to further divide just pieces of columns into other windows. Now there's another piece of software called LG Dual Controller and that's what allows you to wirelessly have two different computers hooked up uh, to the same screen at the same time and literally be using both with one mouse and one keyboard. And so that's what I was using earlier when I was talking about the Star Wars game and <laughs> Wow, I mean, it really shows you the possibilities are kind of endless here. I haven't played around with a ton of these big monitors. Um, I would have loved to try the Samsung one, which is more geared towards gaming. Um, so I know that they all kind of handle this differently. This one works wirelessly and you choose what is gonna be your main computer and what is gonna be the sub computer. Um, so I got the Mac set up as the main computer and I got the uh, gaming laptop as a sub and from there, you just kind of have to mess around. There's a few different modes. So you can do like side by side, which kind of makes the most sense, or you can do even picture in picture. So I could have the Mac take up the whole screen and then just like on TV, have picture in picture for the gaming laptop over here, um, which is really cool. Some people are gonna use this if they're like a designer, for instance. I've heard of them being able to just transfer files back and forth really easily. Um, and so, cause you're working with different clients with different needs and different file types and, um, and you know, different software licenses, uh, and some software is just not available on cross platform. So whatever, it, it can be really useful. There's so many creative ways that you can use this. And that is what makes it such a elegant, cool looking beast. Let me give you a couple of interesting, useful, but random observations. That's why I just kind of grouped them all together at the end because they're not necessarily all related, um, but still things you would want to know if you're serious about considering buying this monitor. First of all, this is a curved screen, obviously. And it's kind of weird the first time you look at it and you realize that your windows are curving just a little bit. Kind of messes with your head, uh, but you get used to it right away. It's no big deal. It's just like, whoa. But I actually find myself wishing that it curved a little more aggressively. I mean, it curves, but I wish that the ends came in a little bit more because sometimes I find myself having to like crane my head over to like see the little text over there in the corner or something in my email app. Um, so a little bit more of an aggressive curve would be fine with me. And if you look at the Dell and you look at the Samsung, um, even though they may share the same panel, some of these monitors, they do have different curves to them. And that's something to take into account. Now the resolution, they call it a 5K in the marketing, but it's not nearly on the same level as my MacBook Pro screen, for instance. My MacBook Pro screen is nicer, the 2016 screen, but this is not bad in any way. It's very livable. And so 
there are times that I've noticed, right? It's not quite as nice, but I'm also not gonna complain. The benefits and the trade-offs are so great that I just don't care. It's, it's too good to care. Now the curved monitor stand actually leaves a nice little space, a nest for my iPad. I can set my iPad right there. And why does this matter? It matters because in Catalina, we're gonna get Sidecar. And Sidecar lets your iPad act as a second screen. So I'm gonna end up with this 49 inch screen. And while I have the 11 inch iPad Pro, now I think next year I'm gonna switch off and go back to that 12.9, the bigger, for this reason, to have it on my desk and have this extra screen. Um, and I'm really excited about it. Uh, but somebody asked me on Instagram when I had mentioned Sidecar, they were like, what are you gonna use that for? And there's two things I'm really excited. Number one, while I'm editing in Final Cut, I can just put the preview right down there and, and have that dedicated and then have a ton of room up top for all my clips uh, and just to browse through my library of footage. Um, so that's gonna be an awesome upgrade. I'm excited about that. And I've already tested Sidecar um, a little bit. But uh, the second thing is just gonna be for like stats and analytics and anything that I want to stay stationary on my iPad on that second display while I'm switching between my virtual desktops or spaces in Mission Control. Using this ultra wide with my MacBook closed uh, has really made me appreciate being able to unlock my Mac with my Apple Watch because it's just quicker and easier um, than having to type out the password. It just happens automatically. Wake it up, it logs me in, and it's good to go because obviously if it's closed, I don't have access to the fingerprint reader. Now, just like a TV, there's several display and color modes that come with this monitor. So you got like HDR, you got reader, you got cinema, you got custom, uh, you got vivid, which is sort of like the default. And here's the thing, I really like the HDR look. I know I've seen other people complain about it, but just for like really white windows and the productivity side of things, not even like watching content or playing a game, I really like the HDR look. It looks really good. Um, but I had a little bug with it where when I was clicking the mouse into different windows, it was sort of like brighten up and then get dimmer. And it was just acting up a little bit. So I figured there's a little bug there that somebody needs to address, whether it's Apple or LG. And so I switched it back into Vivid, which still looks nice uh, once you get used to it. It's just not the same once you've seen that HDR. So that's just something to know about too, if you're a Mac user. One annoying thing, which is actually quite a bit annoying, is that I can't use the volume controls on my Apple keyboard, the Magic Keyboard, uh, with the number pad to control the volume on the monitor, on the display. And the speakers on the display, you probably have seen if you've checked out the reviews, they're pretty decent for what they are. Um, but most of the time I end up using AirPods or my Bose noise canceling headphones uh, when I'm editing or listening to music or something. So it doesn't end up being a huge deal, but it's one of those things like that should work and it's just annoying that it doesn't. Finally, the last thing I wanna say is that I saw several comments as I was researching this and preparing to buy. They were saying for Mac users, MacBook Pros in particular, they were seeing like a blanking out, a blacking out of the screen, maybe a couple of times an hour or something. And I just haven't run into that at all. It was something I was a little bit worried about because I saw that on Amazon and on LG's side and stuff. and. I never had a problem with it right out of the box and I updated the software too. It just hasn't been a problem. So if you've seen those too and it's keeping you from buying this, I would say don't worry about it and just update the software. You should be good. So I don't wanna make a full recommendation at this point because I've just been using it for a couple of days. Uh, this is just a video where I wanted to share like the setup because uh, it's cool. And I'm, I'm gonna do a follow-up too in about a month and I'll let you know what it's really like once I've really dug in. But I'll say that it is useful, it does save time, it does let me work and game, and it does look good. And those are all like big bonuses and pluses, big, 49 inches big. So, so far I'm really happy with it, but I'll give you guys an update in a little bit. And in fact, leave me a comment, let me know what exactly you wanna know more about. Uh, but that's it for this video. Like I said, you can follow at Daily Tech, spelled daily, T-E-K-K on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll catch you in the next video. Later.